When Russia unveiled its Su-57 stealth fighter, the world scoffed. Critics called it a paper plane, a budget version of the American F-22, a prototype that would never see the light of real combat. Defense analysts laughed, Western pilots dismissed it, and many nations overlooked it in favor of proven aircraft. But under all that ridicule, something terrifying has been taking shape. The Su-57 isn't just flying, it's transforming. What was once a joke could now be a threat the world can no longer ignore. The Su-57, originally known as the PAKFAT-50, was introduced with great fanfare as Russia's answer to American fifth-generation fighters. But early delays, production setbacks, and crashes gave skeptics all the ammunition they needed. With only a handful of prototypes flying and a troubled development timeline, it became a punching bag for Western media and analysts. Many pointed out its visible rivets, underwhelming stealth profile, and lack of reliable engines. Compared to the polished American F-22 or the versatile F-35, the Su-57 looked incomplete. Russia's own struggles with sanctions and defense budget constraints didn't help either. It was widely viewed as a failed prestige project, a symbol of ambition that outpaced capability. However, in typical Russian fashion, the Federation didn't retreat. Instead, it doubled down. Behind the scenes, engineers kept refining the Su-57. Over time, the prototype matured into a real combat platform, and the laughter began to fade. Something more sinister was emerging, and few were ready for it. Stealth redefined, not invisible, but deadly. One of the biggest criticisms of the Su-57 was its supposedly poor stealth design. Unlike the F-22 or F-35, the Su-57 wasn't a pure stealth aircraft. Its radar cross-section, RCS, is larger, especially from the sides and rear. But here's the twist. Russia never intended to copy American stealth doctrine. Instead of chasing complete invisibility, Russia opted for a hybrid approach. The Su-57 uses stealth where it matters in the front aspect while maintaining high speed, super maneuverability, and robust sensor suites. It combines low observability with aggressive electronic warfare systems, which can jam and spoof enemy radars. That's not a weakness, that's a strategy. In real combat, this makes the Su-57 a ghost rather than a shadow. It doesn't have to disappear entirely. It just needs to get close enough to deliver a knockout blow and escape. This terrifying blend of partial stealth and raw agility challenges traditional Western assumptions about what makes a fifth-generation fighter lethal. Super maneuverability. The hidden edge. Where Western jets emphasize stealth and networked warfare, Russia has doubled down on an old-school but highly effective strength. Super maneuverability. The Su-57's 3D thrust vectoring nozzles give it performance characteristics that no Western fifth-gen aircraft can match. This allows the Su-57 to perform extreme aerobatic maneuvers at close range, dodging missiles, outturning opponents, and forcing engagements into the visual range where its stealth disadvantages matter less. In a dogfight, this gives Russian pilots a terrifying advantage. Moreover, it's not just about tricks at air shows. These capabilities could be a nightmare for AWACS protected strike packages or slow drones. The Su-57 can dive into hostile airspace, unleash chaos, and escape with maneuvers that defy Western expectations. It's not subtle, it's not pretty, but it's deadly. A killer sensor suite. The Su-57 doesn't just rely on its agility and partial stealth. It carries a robust and complex sensor system that's tailored for electronic warfare and multi-target engagement. Its N036 Bielka radar suite is a multi-band radar system, which includes both X-band main radar and L-band radars embedded in the wings. Why does that matter? The L-band is especially effective against stealth aircraft. While it lacks pinpoint accuracy, it can detect low RCS aircraft like the F-35 or F-22 from further out. That gives the Su-57 a potential edge in spotting enemies who thought they were undetectable. Additionally, the Su-57 features IRST infrared search and track systems, allowing it to hunt aircraft without emitting radar signals. This passive tracking is perfect for ambush tactics. Combined with data fusion and helmet-mounted targeting systems, 
the Su-57 can see and strike in ways few expected. Internal weapons bay and hypersonic capabilities. Another surprise lies in the Su-57's internal weapons bay. Critics once argued the Russians wouldn't be able to integrate modern air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons internally. They were wrong. The Su-57 carries a wide range of missiles from long-range R-77M air-to-air missiles to stealthy cruise missiles and advanced bombs hidden within its belly. But what really terrifies Western defense planners is the Su-57's ability to launch hypersonic weapons. Russia has already deployed air-launched hypersonic missiles like the KH-47M, two Kinjal on other platforms. If a variant is integrated with the Su-57, it would give Russia a game-changing first-strike option that outruns any current missile defense. This capability moves the Su-57 from a defensive aircraft to a preemptive strike tool. Imagine a squadron of stealthy, fast, and super-maneuverable aircraft, each carrying missiles that travel at Mach 10. That's not science fiction. That's Russia's strategy, export potential, and combat trials. For years, foreign buyers avoided the Su-57. It was too new, too risky, and lacked credibility. Not long ago, the Su-57 was seen as a gamble, an expensive prototype with big promises, but little proof. Most countries, especially those used to buying US or European jets, kept their distance. But the narrative is shifting fast, with Western defense markets becoming harder to access, especially for nations facing US sanctions, the Su-57 is gaining quiet interest. India, once hesitant and critical of Russia's delays, is reportedly revisiting the idea of acquiring a custom variant in the future. Other nations like Algeria and Vietnam are also rumored to be exploring the jet as a viable alternative to American stealth fighters. What's giving these countries a reason to reconsider? Real combat data. Russia has deployed the Su-57 in limited roles over Syria and more recently in Ukraine. While not used in high-risk frontline missions, the aircraft has reportedly operated under heavy surveillance and support, testing its radar, weapon systems, and electronic warfare capabilities. These missions may have been short and controlled, but they provided Russia with exactly what it needed. Real battlefield feedback. In a world where even one successful stealth deployment speaks volumes, the Su-57 is beginning to shed its unproven label. Every time the Su-57 takes off in real-world missions, it adds to its credibility. This is no longer a paper jet or a showroom prototype. Russia has been quietly refining each new batch, upgrading avionics, improving materials, and enhancing weapons compatibility. The aircraft is evolving with every production cycle. What started as an experimental stealth jet is now maturing into an exportable war machine. The West may still doubt it, but on the ground and in the air, the Su-57 is earning its stripes. Sixth Generation Foundations Many believe that the Su-57 is not the endgame, but the beginning of something even more formidable. Russia's Sixth Generation Fighter Program, often referred to as the Su-75 Checkmate, will draw heavily from the Su-57's technologies and combat experience. Stealth, speed, sensor fusion, and unmanned teaming are all being baked into Russia's future aerial doctrine. So while the West focuses on NGAD and Tempest, Russia is quietly building its own future force. The Su-57 is both a test bed and a stepping stone. Every system refined on the Su-57 today will power Russia's next generation war machine tomorrow. In this light, the Su-57 isn't just a fifth gen aircraft, it's a platform of transition and that makes it more dangerous than anyone thought. They laughed at the Su-57. They called it late, clunky, and obsolete before it even got airborne. But today, that laughter is fading. The Su-57 has gone from a prototype with potential to a platform with power. It has proven its agility, stealth strategy, and weapons integration in ways few expected. As the global balance of air power shifts, the Su-57 is becoming a serious player. It's not about being perfect, it's about being unpredictable, adaptable, and deadly. And that's exactly what this aircraft has become. So next time someone dismisses the Su-57, remind them. Russia built it to fight wars, not win beauty contests. And beneath its angular frame lies something truly terrifying. If you found this breakdown eye-opening, don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe for more deep dives into global defense tech and aviation warfare. What do you think is the most underrated fighter jet in the world today? Let us know in the comments below.